Hey, what's up everyone? Today we are taking selfies. Well, artsy ones. It's the self-portrait challenge. I'm literally hating every second of this. Nothing's really working out. Ugh, I'm struggling. This is gonna take a whole lot longer than I thought it was going to take. Four professional photographers go head to head, well, me and three photographers, to see who is the selfie master. Evan, Effie, Francis, and me will all be advised and judged by fashion photographer and model, Chelsea Bowl. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. Now, Chelsea, if you want to tell us uh, and the, you know anybody watching this video why it's important for photographers to be good at taking self-portraits. Being good at taking self-portraits can greatly improve your photography, taking portraits of other people. It really helps you have more empathy for your subject. That way uh, you have a better understanding of how it feels in front of the camera and also how your body translates on camera. Like what you think you're doing isn't necessarily how it actually looks in the photographs. So you can kind of understand why the model might not always be following your direction exactly, so you can direct them better. I'm super excited to be challenged like this because this isn't something that I get much in my life anymore, but I'm also really scared of being judged. It's a really good time to practice new things that you wouldn't be able to do in a more high pressure situation with the team, with the model. I've come up with ideas, I've scrapped those ideas, I've come up with new ideas, I've scrapped those too. What are the, the tips that you want us to sort of adhere to? One of the first things you want to do is look at the locations that you have available. So I think it's really good to just like look around your home or your office and see what you have available. I have a lot of space, but I also have a child who takes up that space. Usually I recommend sticking your windows, especially if you don't have artificial lights available. I've been noticing the last couple days that the light is really good this time of day and eventually kind of streaks up the wall towards that mirror. I mean, that in itself can be limiting, but that limit can also help inspire your concept. If you have a specific area by your windows that's inspiring, or maybe by your windows is really messy, so you have to make your own set or like hang up a bed sheet or something, that's a really good start for developing a concept for your self-portrait. So once you have the location, it's good to think about furthering that concept by using either something unique about yourself or something unique that you have around your home. Okay, so my number one thought was always to use plants because have a ton of plants but then I also realize plants are overused in like so many photos but I haven't used any yet so making a mood board thinking about lighting what you're gonna wear how you're gonna do your hair got this kind of nice blazer here <clears throat> I think I'm gonna work with that my boyfriend literally just told me to dress nicer <laughs> so I have put something on that is nice which actually makes sense for the wider shots anyway. And then setting up the shot. So then we go back to the continuous lights or your window. I've chosen a spot that is between my office and the Ritz Hotel. There's this nice sort of pedestrian tunnel that's got some good reflected light in it. So I think that's gonna work out for my portrait. And I've just parked right in the middle of it uh, and I hope that's okay and I don't get a ticket. Okay, so it is like super dark in my house. Um, and as a result, I am going to go outside until the light is more favorable. So I'm just going to take some pop-up diffusion outside and maybe like a bounce board and see what I can do from there. Yeah, I'm curious about like how you, you know, take a photo without showing that you're holding something in your hand. I actually have been using my phone as my remote. If I'm doing like a portrait shot, it's really easy. You just hold it below, like you look at the shot and then turn your face. Sometimes I'll have something like just out of frame that I can just place my phone on without like throwing it or dropping it. And you set like a two second timer or something so you can hide your phone and then get back in your pose. And there are times when I find it's too hard to hide my phone. So I just end up Photoshopping it out, but I do make sure it's in a place that will be easy to Photoshop it out. Should we try different things? Like should we try like a close up and then one that's a little bit wider or what's your suggestion? Are there framings that we should avoid? I don't think there's necessarily framing that you should avoid, but I do think that the closer you are, the more engaging the photo will be without all of the other elements that can often go into portraits, like a story or a fancy location or fashion styling. So if all you have is yourself to work with, a close-up portrait's going to be more engaging, unless you have unique lighting or something else going into it. 
so I definitely recommend starting closer up and then when you're more comfortable with your workflow then doing your full body photos because you're more used to the process of shooting self-portraits at that point. The part that I'm really struggling with right now is posing. I think part of that has to do with the fact that I've been shooting this with no music. So I'm going to try and see if I can just throw some tunes on and give up thinking about what it's going to look like in the photo so much as it's more about the fluidity of the movements and it almost becomes more like a dance than it does posing. The most important thing that I want to know is how do I not look stupid? My advice would be to um, let go of the fear of looking stupid and to just start out by trying everything. Move around a lot, be silly, be fun. So you do your first batch of like whatever and half of like more than half of them are going to look really bad, but you'll get an idea from that and that will help you inspire the next batch of photos. And it's sort of this like shooting and then culling process. So you'll do one thing and then you'll be like, oh, I don't like the way my hand looks. It's really weird. So I'm going to do that exact same thing, but fix my hand. Do we know about how men and women can pose differently for sort of like the best results? Definitely. And I think it also goes into camera angles. And you'll notice this when you look at selfies for men and women. Women tend to take photos that are higher up. It makes their eyes look bigger and everything else looks slimmer. Men tend to take photos from a lower angle because it makes their jawline look really flattering. So Effie and Frances being two beautiful girls are just naturally going to look better in a photo. It's just art direction, right? But Evan has some major chops too. He's very debonair, he dresses well, he's got a really amazing jawline and facial features. And I think that's why leaning into the camera is going to give you that confident look in the jawline that you're looking for. I'm just going to spend the rest of the video like yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> You guys can see up my but nose. But you all see that really confident attitude. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to put you on the ground. There you go. <laughs> that looks great. <laughs> In general, people tend to respond to photos of women that look a little more soft and, and vulnerable. So you can play with that a little bit, you know, turning away from the camera and being a little more in your own element, a little more intimate about it. With men, you do prefer like more leaning into the camera confident. What's your ratio of like shots you take to a shot you'll like and keep? I think I usually get about one like great usable photo out of maybe every like 15 or 20. I've gone through all the photos. I took about 500. I hope everyone else took about 500. Out of the 500, there were actually 20 very good ones. I feel like I've probably taken 30 shots so far and I've gotten Goose egg. There's definitely a few shots in there that surprised me and it went in a different direction than I initially imagined, but um, that's normal for me. The location I chose, I, I think worked out pretty well. The, the lighting was variable and I did end up spending a lot of time just waiting. Real good chance that none of these are gonna be in focus uh, or exposed correctly. So, so far. Uh... Definitely if things aren't working, look at what isn't, like really analyze that photo and change it, but don't get discouraged. I literally almost gave up. I was so frustrated. I tried a bunch of things like um, these, like getting really close to the camera, like on top of my eye, just to like, I don't know, be artsy. But none of those are really working. Reader's Digest version, this is gonna take a whole lot longer than I thought it was going to take. It's important to remember that self-portraits take a long time to really nail. Uh, it's really worth it in the end, but definitely don't get discouraged. We're harder on ourselves than we ever are on models. I am sure you know when you're shooting a portrait, there are so many outtakes, but you're less critical of them because you're less critical of that person. So just try to look at yourself through that same forgiving lens. I don't think I've ever taken a self-portrait before. I don't even like taking selfies with my phone. So the fact that I'm talking to my camera right now uh, in the car is uh, deeply unnerving. Oh, and also I should mention I've chosen to do this on film because if it wasn't hard enough already, this will make it extra hard. So I'm not really getting exactly what I wanted. It looks cool, but it's not really what I want. You realize how a piece of clothing hangs based on your posture and how your posture is always wrong. And that just kind of wrinkles my clothing a lot. So a lot of photos were ruined because I was just hunched in a weird way and my clothes looked terrible. I'm kind of sick of staring at my own face. Um, so some obscurity from the drapes would be beneficial for me to get over the self-consciousness. 
Everyone should try to aim for three photos. It would be really cool to challenge yourself to do a close-up portrait, more of a three-quarter shot, and then maybe a full body if that's something you can make work in your space or just something that's a bit of a wild card, whatever you think looks best. All right, you guys ready for this? Kind of. Let's do it. <laughs> kind of. No, no. I guess in total I shot 10 frames, two rolls of film, and probably messed up the first couple on the first roll, so let's say maybe there's six or eight. This has been a good challenge, but it's still been fun. I've learned a lot. I shot the majority of these on digital. I really like them. I really like that I can see my body language, my body position, and the way the light's hitting me in real time through my smartphone. But it kind of pulls away that element of trust that you need when you're shooting film. I shoot much better when I know that I have to lean into that trust. Everything was harder than expected. The posing was harder. The framing was harder. The shooting was harder. The choosing a location was harder. And I don't want to discourage you. Maybe it's just me. All right, guys, thank you so much for coming back together and doing all of this. Uh, I'm sure it was as much of a journey for you guys as it was for me. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Chelsea, and she is going to talk to each one of us about our experience and about our photos. After seeing everyone's footage in the photos, I'm really impressed. I think it's so cool that everyone had the same guidelines and challenge. Everyone came up with something entirely unique and different from each other. And I'm really excited for you guys to see what everyone else did, so why don't we get started with that? I think we could start with Effie. I would like to know what the process was like for you. I didn't really like doing it. It was just a lot of like going back and like positioning something and getting that in focus and then trying to stay in that position. So it was frustrating. And then none of the pictures turned out the way I wanted, but I actually liked them more than what I originally planned. So I was happy with the result. What did you learn in the process? I've actually learned this multiple times over and over again. Every time I shoot something, I like never think I'm gonna have a good picture. And then when I'm editing them, there's something good there. I love the high contrast like finish you have on them. I think it's super captivating and works really well. Like the vibrancy of the color. I love the way you played with the lighting and the angles, like the, your long limbs, the last one, and the shadow on your face is, is stunning. Uh, but what I really loved was seeing the effort and planning put in to just like prepping for those shots, like watching you kill those plants over and really create mm -hmm. a set there, and then moving it when the light broke. I'm Thank really you. impressed. We're going to Evan next. How did you find shooting film and outdoors? Those were two unique things that you did that I, I've i never done and not everyone thought of doing. I chose the location because it was convenient for me at the time. And the light just looked nice in that location. I'd used it before, like to shoot pictures of other people. And um, I thought I could get away with it. Uh, the only downside was it was really windy. So everything kept blowing over. So <laughs> I learned a few tricks that unlocked the shoot for me. Yeah, I really enjoyed the fact that you shot in public. That's something that I haven't done yet. I always get worried about people watching. I like that you shot on film. I think the photos, because of that, look really clean and crisp. I love the black and white, and I like your use of lighting and your use of props and expression. So kudos to you for all of those things. That is going on, sir? Oh, it's all right. Uh, <laughs> No, just an encampment here, yeah. Journalism in action, everyone. Journalism oh. in action. Okay, yeah, see ya. Sorry, guys, the perils of sitting in a marked vehicle. We can move on next to Dale. Well, first, I want to know how you found the process. Uh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny, like, after all the instructions you gave us, I realized at the end that I literally did not listen to a single thing that you said. I felt like I was cheating by doing these sort of closely cropped stuff because it was just easier to do, but it really felt like it lacked creativity. Something I talked about, like shooting close up is much easier. Like you, you know, you don't need to put that much thought into everything because you just have a captivating face, expressions, you only have to worry about how lighting looks here, the angles of one particular part of your body. Um, so at least that showed true in practice and I think with more experience with self-portraits that's something you can overcome but I didn't even notice looking at either of your images especially like Dale you changed your outfit. This took me two days. 
I <laughs> one day and then was like, I got nothing. And then I'm like, let's try again another day. I'm really curious where you shot the last one. I think you're in a t-shirt and it's really dark. That's on my kitchen floor. I was right next to the stove and the oven. So I just took some black duvetine and draped it over the oven and the drawers just so I had a background that you couldn't place the background. You couldn't say where it was. I think there's like a good set of like very different and, and captivating images here. So, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. Okay, what do we think about Francis's? They're stunning. Do you shot on digital and film for these, right? Yeah, so typically I shoot a lot of self-portraits, but I almost always do them on film. And so for this, I did digital and was hating the process of it. So at the very end, I was like, I'm gonna do something for just for me and shoot some Polaroids. I loved your images and I saw almost the journey of you finding that creativity. I like that your face isn't the focus. To me, like it could almost be a portrait of anyone and it feels like it's making wider statements. But then I watched the videos of you taking them and at one point you're just like, I'm tired of my face. And like, <laughs> that's so relatable, but I love the way just something that simple can really end up being a very creative, beautiful, eerie photo. As something as simple as not wanting to look at your face that much longer turned into that Polaroid, which is breathtaking. Well, well, the time has come, uh, Miss Chelsea Ball, who deserves the, the prize of, well, nothing, but <laughs> the, the, the prize of pride, shall it awesome. be. I just want to say quickly that I noticed with each photo set, something that I noticed with my own self-portrait too, there was one image for everyone that to me really stood out. And I always find that in my process with every session, there's like that one that's my star photo that I'm going to hold on to forever. Um, so it was cool to see that it, it rang true for everyone, at least from my perspective. I hate to have to choose a winner because I think everyone did an incredible job and everyone has their own strengths. And honestly, each self-portrait was so different that it's really hard to compare them. But um, I wanted to award the winner of nothing to Francis. Bravo. The person with the most experience shooting self-portraits wins. <laughs> Who would have thought? It's so unfair. <laughs> Thank you all so, so very much. And uh, enjoy your summer now and uh, happy shooting. Thank you. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had as much fun watching this as we did making it. And I encourage you to try the challenge for yourself. I think you're going to learn a lot about yourself and your photography in the process. And if you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and comment in the comment section below about some of your experiences taking self-portraits and any tips or tricks that you have for the rest of the community. And as always, thumbs up if you like what we're doing, thumbs down if you don't like the fact that I wore a suit jacket for the first time on camera. And as I always say, go out there, have some fun, and happy shooting.